Maybe there is more than one way to play Boros. Hello everybody and welcome back to another Modern Horizons 3 video. First and foremost, just wanted to say thank you everybody who has been showing the channel some love over the past, you know, couple of weeks as we get a little bit deeper into the MH3 metagame. Uh, the channel has been seeing incredible amounts of views and some new subscribers, so welcome all the new subscribers. Let me know uh, what your favorite part about these videos and the channel is. Let me know in the comments section down below. But today, we are going to be kind of putting a little bit of a different take on the Boros deck than you may have seen. A lot of people have been playing this kind of energy package with Guide of Souls, Amped Raptor, Unstable Amulet, and what's the Galvanic Discharge. That's kind of like this four-pack of energy cards. And I think that deck is very good, but I wanted to try and see if we could take a slightly different approach. Now, this is kind of a, I guess you call this a more classic take on the archetype, where you're just kind of playing, I guess, yesterday's news with all these MH2 cards with Dragon's Rage Channeler, Ragavan, uh, we have a Solitude Ephemerate Angle, and then you're kind of utilizing Stoneforge Mystic as your main threat of choice, pairing with Culture Complete and Sword of Fire and Ice. What I really like about this deck is the combination between Fable the Mirror Breaker and Flage, where Flage is very powerful if you can get, you know, cards in the graveyard quickly, which Fable the Mirror Breaker allows you to do at a pretty rapid rate. On top of that, we also have Bobble plus Dragon's Rage Channeler, which similarly can dump just a ton of cards into the graveyard very, very fast. If you mill over a Flage, that's, you know, pretty excellent. I could even maybe see playing the fourth copy of Flage in this deck, just because of how well this deck enables the escape on it with, you know, Fable, Channeler, Bobble, Fetchlands, all that kind of all that kind of stuff. But yeah, past that, you really are just kind of a it's more of a traditional mid-range deck with, you know, removal spells like Lightning Bolt, Prismatic Ending. You have the Solitude Ephemerate angle, but you're not super all in on like Ephemerate and you have not a ton of other stuff to blink. I mean, yeah, Stoneforge Mystic can get blinked once in a while, and sometimes you can use it as like one mana lightning helix on Flage if you, you know, have enough cards in the graveyard to escape it again, which could be pretty powerful. But there's really not a ton else to talk about. I guess, you know, you could talk about the Sword of Fire and Ice, maybe, that could potentially be a different sword. It could be Light and Shadow. But yeah, you, you definitely want to play the Cauldra to pair with the Stoneforge Mystic, because that gives you a very, very fast clock. As far as the mana base is concerned, again, a lot of uh, enough fetch lands to facilitate Flage. Uh, we do have the one Elegant Parlor, one Sokin's On as kind of our utility land, some inspiring advantages, but nothing too crazy to write home about. I will say there is a Blood Crypt in here, and that is specifically to enable the third color on Prismatic Ending. So we don't actually have any black cards, but you kind of do want the third color because ending for three is a lot better than ending for two, uh, especially with Nadu in the format. That's kind of the main reason I wanted to be able to go X equals three. As far as the sideboard is concerned, we have a lot of Blood Moons here because there's been a ton of Eldrazi and Tron decks floating around. Meltdown, which is very good against the Urza Saga decks that are trying to put Constructs into play. Containment Priest, if people are on uh, the kind of dredge vine crab vine deck with Vengevine, grave crawler things like that it's pretty good against those deck also can be all good against nadu to an extent and yakmoth because of court of calling so it, well i guess it is good against yakmoth because they have the the undying creatures but also can be good against court of calling out of nadu wear tears to be able to kill urza saga and some other pesky artifacts or enchantments disruptor flute which is kind of just a good catch-all card there's a lot of matchups where this card comes in and then Cursed Totem is mostly here for Nadu and Yakmoth. But that's pretty much it for the deck, the deck tech. I know we didn't have a ton of uh, stuff to talk about here, but like I said, this is kind of just your classic mid-range deck. Really want to try out the combination of Flage alongside this sort of more mid-range shell that doesn't rely on the energy stuff. Uh, not sure if it's better than the energy cards because those cards are extremely powerful and they've been a little bit more successful. But it's worth trying out. So anyways, I will see you back here in just a little bit for round number one. We got a keeper we have located a keeper an average hand some would say i'm gonna go to go bots and i will look up the price of necro dominance after i cast my record band. all right necro dominance cool they are 30 tickets or well they sell for 30 right that's what this says sell for 30 that's a lot that's a lot all right, I'm going to play Channeler first, because if they Ice Fang quoted me, I might bolt it. I will bolt it, actually. Okay, they didn't Ice Fang me. 
Are we playing against rhinos? What's going on here? What's going on here? You have a rhinos gamer? What is this? Okay. Teamer with remand, huh? Kind of sus. Kind of sus. Oh, okay. So they're playing Scape Shift. I guess that makes sense. I do have a Black Source in my deck, but I do not have a Fetch Lane to find the Black Source if we draw a Prismatic Ending. Well, I have that. That works. Pretty sure to bolt an upkeep, right? All right, let's do this. What are we missing? You have land, creature, artifact. So we're missing instantaneous. Ding, 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 ding. Graveyard. I mean, I don't really want to draw that because I'm going to pitch the uh, the Stoneforge this turn. kind of want to not draw that either. Kill the Dryad. I take 11. Now they take 8, go to 9. I forgot this one. It's something sickness. Misty Rainforest. I'm now realizing, why are we not a Giganta deck? Is there a reason? Oh, Solitude. Okay, right. Hmm. Yep, people can still play that card. Why do they concede? <laughs> Brother, you had protection. Why are you conceding? All right, what do you want against Scape Shifts? I mean, I definitely want the Blood Moons. Uh, Floop me, maybe? Pending seems, well, I guess Bolt's more sus, because at least Pending can kill Dryad, but Bolt cannot. Is it just that? No Flutes. Is Flute good? I guess it's still pretty good against the Ring, huh? Could cut, like, a Flage and a Fable, because they're kind of slow. Just don't have a lot of time for that kind of stuff. Yeah, Flute naming Scape Shift or, or, or um, the One Ring could be good. See, it is really slow and doesn't really do that much. I'm going to ship this. Okay, I would say this hand's better. I would classify this as a better hand. I think they have Flare. They probably have Flare, right? Okay, then I have Flare here. All right, well, I will cast Ragavan. It's going to be nice if they play Dryad, because I can go... Fetch for White Source, Solitude, Pitch, Ephemerate, Kill Both. Are they just YOLO? I could go Solitude, Pitch, Ephemerate, Kill Grazer, Attack, Fetch, Play, play Blood Boon. And then if they kill the Ragged Band, I can just play Stoneforge. Let's do it. I'm in. I'm in. You play Fable. What? Fable over Blood Moon this turn? Really? Why? All right. Well, how about we don't have the decision? And then I'll just cast Stoneforge Mystic. See, we baited the bolt. Or do they have Remand too? No. Right. I will get the Cauldra... Cauldra Meat. I guess the Fable also kind of protects against Pick Your Poison, because we'd rather sack the Fable than the Blood Moon to Pip. Maybe if you played the land before, the Ragavan would have connected. I mean, they know that Blood Moon is a possibility, right? Like, do I Blood Moon over just putting Cauldra into play here? I kind of think I just Cauldra, right? I guess Cauldra's worse against Pip. Is it Fable? So, in theory, if we Fable and draw a land, we can Moon and Cauldra next turn. What if it's What if the play is just Fable? I actually kind of like it. Yeah, because this gives us the ability to just do everything next turn, and it's it's much better against Pick Your Poison, because we don't care about second Fable to Pip. It is a really weird line, but it kind of makes sense to me. Yeah, kind of rude. It's a little rude. Not a big fan of that. We did draw the land, so now we just go here. Combat, attack. Then we can go Blood Moon Pass. I wonder if they had Pip last turn, 
This is their fifth turn. Oh, but they, yeah, they have an extra land drop. So they could have had Pip last turn, right? Because I think they did play, they played a fifth land last turn, right? I think. Pretty sure they did. I'm sorry, you want to run that by me again? Just getting a, they're using Scape Shift to get a basic island, kind of based. Man, do what you got to do, right? All right, basic island acquired. It's a really expensive basic island. Yeah, formatic rotation. All right, what are you drawing? I would like to know what you are drawing. Coiling Oracle. And deck. Go to nine. No, they ordered these lands from their Warhammer 40k. Not even Guru. Although I will say these lands don't look that bad. They're kind of nice. All right. Ring activation. Concede. Easy. Easy dubs. Hmm. Well, uh, I think we know what to do at this end. Can I have a keepable hand, please? And technically... It is technically a keepable hand. I kind of want to do this. And just have two untap lands. Actually, no, that's stupid. I can do it this way, right? Yeah, this is better. Thank you for the support. All right, we have a Nadu Enjoyer. Nadu Enjoyer confirmed. Well, we're going to get dumpstered this game, right? I kind of want that Ephemerate back. I mean, the Solitude's not even good, right? I guess... I can solitude the safekeeper in their upkeep to try and trade for a land, maybe. Was that a good plan? No, but do I have a better plan? Not really. I have a ring on top. I don't know what else I'm supposed to do if I'm not doing this. And the reason I'm doing an upkeep is because if they do decide to sack a land, then they can't play Nadu this turn. But if I let them go to main phase, they can play the land and then play the Nadu and then sack. That was, uh, that came from the heart, okay? Surely. I'll have you take it up with my lawyer. Well, this is, uh, it's not going well. You get paid $10 an hour. You should ask for a raise. Riders on the storm. Your turn. No, we do not have Sword of War and Peace in our deck. Yeah, but how much did you get paid? All right, Cord for Deuce. That looks like a Shuko. Maybe they don't have a land? Of course they do. Yeah, uh, I'm good. I'm good. I am. I am simply all set with that. Uh, all right. So flute me. Is curse totem good? I don't think so. Because it doesn't look like they're playing the man the version with mana dorks. They're playing like mem knights and that kind of shit. I think the version that version had grazer, which does which gets run totem. Where to is good against Shugo. We could bring in Meltdown, I guess. And then Priest also good against Cord. No idea what to cut, though. Pending seems a little sus. I guess maybe Bolt's worse. Because Bolt just doesn't kill Nadu. Yeah, that's a good play. Meltdown's good against Midnight plus Drum. Maybe I cut the Pending. No, because Pending kills Shugo. But typically they're not exposing Shuko until the turn that they go for it. So what if I just did something like this? Just do Meltdown, Wear Tear, Flute. Kind of like this. Keep the Ephemerate Solitude. Our white card counts a little bit low for a 14. Is there any red cards you would cut to keep in pendings? Maybe like trim two Fables? Because Fable's kind of slow. Try that. I guess Ragavin is not great against Midnight either. I could buy that. The sand seems good. And by good, I mean very, very good. I'm going to save the fetch land in case I want to go get a blood crypt. 
just going to get Cauldron and try and kill them. Cauldra. The Horny Thopter. All right, so let's get... I guess we can get the Blood Crypts. Because we don't really need a third white. Put in Cauldra. Attack for five Blood Channeler. And then if they cast Nadu this turn, we can just Solitude it. Uh, well, we can also maybe Meltdown. Depending. Okay, that that is interesting. Any thoughts on where Terror Saga they activate make a token a response that we melt down for zero? That sounds good, right? I guess I keep that because if I don't have to solitude this turn, it's a white card that I can go solitude ephemerate next turn. Which is pretty good. Yeah, and we get to leave open ephemerate, which is nice. All right, Meltdown confirmed. Good card. <laughs> Meltdown's pretty good, huh? I do like me some Meltdowns. I'll tech. Got him! Surely I can't die this turn with Solitude up, right? That just can't happen. It's not possible. What? <laughs> Storm the Storm. Cavern of Souls. More like Cavern of Joels. You're a wizard, Harry. What is this? Brother. Are you not just dead? Okay. I guess... They do gain three life off of this. They also get the draw card. Maybe I shouldn't have done this. But this was bad. This might get me delirium, though. Uh, instant sorcery land creature. I guess that was going to get delirium, anyways. Then this, kill the arbor. And then we send with everything. We have nine. It's still lethal, right? Because they block the stone forge and dig eight. Trample. Game three. Let's try Meltdown again, shall we? That was pretty good. Uh, sure. The Saint's fine. All right. Whoever forget to spoil Nido is a lucky person. Who is that? Who do you think could be so lucky to get to to be granted gifted Nadu as a as a preview card? Couldn't be me. It's the record. Bottom left. We are one and zero in game three. What's my favorite MH tech so far? Probably Eldrazi. Either Eldrazi or Nadu. I really liked the Eldrazi deck that we just played. We we punted the 5-0. We should have 5-0 that last league. Yeah, that's true. Nadu was not leaked. I think Buried Alive was, but I don't remember seeing it because I, once, they, once they confirmed that I was going to get a spoiler card, I stopped looking at leaks just so I could specifically avoid this situation of like, getting my spoiler card leaked. I mean, is it's like a blessing and a curse, right? You know? Because the card is so obvious. The card is extremely broken. So is is that a, is it a good thing or a bad thing? It's probably a good thing, right? Any traders? Anybody just want to trade for a monkey? I hope they do. I think they will not block, though. No, energy's good. The energy decks that Spikes have been playing, they're good. So, I would like to be greedy. Huh. I don't know what to do now. Because if I tear the Saga, they still have a Shuko in play, which is bad for me, right? Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. I think Ragavan Taplane is good. I guess I can Shock, just to hold up Ephemerate in case that matters. I don't think my life total matters that much. But I want to I wanna get full value out of the Wear Tear, because I, I want to make sure they don't have Shuko access. Necrodominance plus Spellbook. What about Necrodominance plus Reliquary Tower? I'll take this trade. Or, what if we kill these two? 
let them keep the Shuko. Is that better? I can always solitude the construct. Let me just let the Ragavan go and save the solitude. I'll just let the Ragavan go. So they trade, then I kill both. Oh, they just didn't block. Okay. Well, never mind. <laughs> we got a second Juco. Uh, I mean, I guess I'll cast it, right? It makes the Ragavan bigger. It might be more relevant to hold up Ephemerate. Yeah. I just don't think the Shuko matters. Bro, what the hell? You're supposed to... What? You have a third Shuko? Come on, man. What is this? I've been lied to. Three of them? Three? So many. I mean, I guess. Uh, Combat. Are you allowed to play three Shuko? I think this version plays four. There was a version that I think had three trophies, and I'm pretty sure that person had four Shukos. I can almost cast it. I think we go Stoneforge Fable. Tres Shukos. Let me still have Ephemerate up, or Solitude up, rather. Ooh. Good turn. And now if I draw a land, we can go Stoneforge in... The Cauldra... Yeah, we can Stoneforge in the Sword and equip, I guess. But a Shuko. Okay, Saga number two. It's pretty good. Oh, they figured it out. They didn't equip last turn, so I thought they didn't know. It turns out they do know. Ooh. Ah. Well, that's certainly interesting. Am I supposed to discard the Sword here? I feel like I am, right? Because I want the extra card in the graveyard. See, I kind of want to hold the Flage and just kill the Construct token with Flage. I was thinking discard Sword, four cards in graveyard, cast Flage, kill Construct. Next turn, Solitude, which is the fifth card that lets me flashback Flage. I think I like that. I guess the other option is discard Sword, Flage... Rip a white card. Stoneforge in Cauldra. Send everything. Let them trade. Yeah, I guess that is better, right? Okay, white card acquired. Yeah, this is this is pretty good now. Because now we just don't care about the uh, the Construct token. Like, sure, they can trade, but who cares? I don't think I mind that much if they trade. Because now they kind of have to trade. Like, I don't think they have a choice at this point. I guess not. Never mind. <laughs> It seems like they disagree with me. Okay, Ragavan hit. Your turn. We still have Solitude up. They still cannot cast Court of Calling, for what it's worth. They only have two green. It's nice. The Juan Ring. I forgot you could play that card. Well, all right, you have a turn. That's fine. How many Nadu decks, how many Nadu decks have I run into today? Honestly, not that many. I think this is only the second one, right? I think it's the second the second one. I'll just take this. I will take four. Oh, no, I'm yawning already. We're only halfway through the stream. Yeah, that's a good point. Not a lot of people have the cards. All right, well, surely they're dead next turn, right? Surely they're dead next turn. Somebody was saying in chat earlier that they were that Mana Traders was going to have the cards tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern. If you had to build a modern deck around the One Ring, but not Amulet Titan, what would you build? Um, probably the Scape Shift deck. It's a brighter die. I I don't know. I just I don't know if I like this build. I mean, can't argue with results. They have three trophies, but and it looks like this is the build that our opponent's playing. I just don't know if I like that more than the versions that we played. It's certainly, like, more explosive, but I these One Rings just feel so strange in this deck. Like, I don't really understand these. Sure. That's a card that doesn't make a lot of sense to me in these decks. Or in my opponent's version, at least. Four minute time walk. I mean, I get it. I get it. Ding, ding. Right, so we have to do this, and I guess hope they don't have second Nadu. Do they have enough mana to cord for Safekeeper? Well, even if they do, I can respond and ephemerate the Solitude. 
Okay, they hit a drum. They can cord for safekeeper. They go green, 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 one, blue mana. Uh, okay. And I guess we do ephemerate the solitude just to have the body in play. Because otherwise I lose the solitude. So we might as well, right? Also, better if they have a second Nadu because they have plus creatures. They just have less material in play. I don't know. I mean, I think they definitely have the ability to win. They could fetch for a Dryad Arbor and draw four cards. Like, we're definitely not out of the woods yet. <laughs> they certainly can win this turn. Yeah, they double backed it, so they have to win this turn. They win this turn or they're dead. But I don't. I think it's more likely than you think it is. Because they're playing Thopters and Memnites, which they hit a Thopter. Or they could just hit Thopters and Nemnites and keep going, right? They also have... This version has four Colony Gardens, which they can hit off of Nadu to, to have more creatures to keep going. So, like, this version is a lot better at comboing off on lower bases with the zero meta creatures and the Gardens. So if any version of Nadu could do it, it's this one. That being said, I think they have Brick now. Unless they have a second Arbor, maybe? Unless they just have the Nantuko in hand? Oh, they can cord for it. They hit a cord, right? Oh. <laughs> Turns out Grief is the good guy. Grief was the good guy all along. Wow. Crazy. Did not expect to die this turn with the Solitude and an Ephemerate. That's kind of fucking stupid, huh? Oh, man. Classic. Uh, very reactive hand, so hopefully they're playing a proactive deck. Tamiyo. Uh, do we bolt or pending? Probably pending, because bolt can kill a dash ragavan. Do, 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 do. Why is Shuko still legal? That's a good question. It's a, it's a really good question. Couldn't tell you on that. I mean, this is really the first time that it's ever done anything, like, super broken, right? Like, Shuko hasn't really done that much before today. What's this? Emre! Emre! Discharge, Haywire Might, Tamiyo. Okay, 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 okay. Let cook. Let cook. All right, let's dash, 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 dash. No, they've already specifically stated they're not going to ban anything before the BT. What? What is this? I mean, I guess I'll gas it. I don't know. Uh, go. Do we have Hemorrhite Ragavan? I thought about it. I don't know if I like it, though. It is a play. But I would almost rather save the Ephemerate for when they go to Bolt. Because, like, I'm going to dash this turn, and they're probably going to try to Bolt it. And then I can Ephemerate it there. Or... We could just hard cast, play Fable, hold up Ephemerate, which I think maybe is better. Yeah, I like that better. Because I would love to get this Fable into play. And I'm especially going to Ephemerate here if it's going to mean they deny them energy, which I like. It's not a Bolt. It's Bolt Plus. It's better than Bolt. I'm going to Bolt that. Ephemerate, which we don't cast. Are we hard casting culture this game? More likely than you think. I guess we discard the bobble. Let me go here. White, red, black. Go to combat. Hit for two. We can hard cast culture next turn, right? I want to play this. Why game bug? Madge, why game bug? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
Hardcast, Giga Chad. Greaves is so much worse. Well, Greaves is also, like, much, much worse on an empty board, right? If you have just Nadu Greaves, you can't equip it twice. Because once you equip it the first time, it has Shroud, and you can't re-equip it. So it's, it is significantly worse. I mean, I'm hard gasting. I'll do, do something about it. I heard gassed. <laughs> Just resolved? Okay, sure. We take those. So, yeah, imagine if they had spell pierce there. That'd be insane. They, in fact, did not have spell pierce, though. So we take those. What you got on top? Probably don't want that one. It's a redraw, I guess. Bro, can I stop drawing bubbles? All right, they're off it. So, what are they again? They're like wizards, I guess. Tamio, Energy, Saga, Emery. I wonder if they're doing Breach stuff. Yeah, they're probably doing Breach stuff, right? Probably want the flutes against Breach. Where Tree seems good against Saga, too. They got Ragavane on the draw, maybe. I don't know. They didn't have a ton of good blockers for it. Just a teenage dirtbag, baby. I'm going to trim one Solitude and one Ragavan. These numbers are tested. How often does Ephemerate work versus them? I mean, I guess we can... Like, they do present multiple creatures at some points, right? The third Stoneforge Mystic is uh, not ideal, but I'm still going to keep this hand. I could cut the Ephemerates, I guess. I just accept that Solitude is hard castable. And maybe just that's fine. Yeah, maybe. Ooh, do they have turn one Emery too? That's gross. No, they don't. They have to kill this fucker. Oops. So we don't kill Tamio, they flip. Should have done this upkeep, I guess. Technically. Grafted War Gear. Whenever Grafted War Gear becomes unattached from a permanent, sacrifice that permanent. Question. If you... Okay. Say I have a Nadu and I attach a Grafted War Gear to it, and then I re-equip the Grafted War Gear, it's not becoming unattached, right? Because it's not... It's equipping to the same creature. I think that works. Spell Bomb. Kill it, I guess. The Grafted War Gear looking about as valuable as Sophie. Hey, I mean, they have blue and red cards. Sophie can't be that bad in this matchup. If we saw play in modern. What, Grafted War Gear? I'm calling your bluff. Come on, dude. I, I only have two equipments. What do you want me to do with this? Oh, now they just have Emery Spellbomb. How do I beat that? I think the answer is I don't. I guess we should play more equipments. Yeah. We need to play Brain Surge for when I draw the fourth Stoneforge Mystic. And by order food, I mean I can go make food because I have some leftovers. Can I just scoop this game? They're extremely dead, right? Uh, like, what am I supposed to do? If I dash, they just spell bomb me. Oh, I thought this was a fetch land. Oh, they don't have red mana. Oh, okay, well, that makes things different. I, I played this game assuming they had red mana the whole time. I should have just got Cauldra. Why didn't I just get Cauldra last turn? I could have sworn they had red mana. It turns out they don't. I'm kind of happy they're not drawing that. Probably should have got Cauldra last turn. I draw a card. Should have drawn before the Ragavan trigger. That's true. I guess the sword is good against them having red mana. Moon Snare prototype. Okay. It's a lot of Tambios. Mucho de Tambios. We kind of need to find a land this turn. Because then we can go play Stoneforge, get Cauldra, Violent Stoneforge. Next turn, Violent Sword Equip. Unfortunately, that is not a land. All right, we can do the trick, right? Yeah, we can do the trick.
X, ring two, rock around two, rock around, that's right, on top is tricky. I have three dead stone forges in hand. <laughs> the emotional support war gear, something like that. Stone forge is just staring at me, just doom staring. Oh, fable. No, I think getting the cauldron play is good. I just, I, I need to kill them before they do stuff. You know, they can't do anything to the cauldron. They can't spell bomb it. Maybe they could find. Maybe they have blue spell bomb in their deck, and they find that. Oh, well. It's All right. Turns out, didn't matter. Did not matter at all. I guess I should bring in Meltdown, huh? Got these Ephemerates. Let's do something like that. Actually, let's go for Ragavan in the play. All right, game three. We are on Ziple. Give me a Ragavan. Good enough. Meltdown's going to kill our bobbles. To the East Coast. Curse Totem, Stoneforge Mystic deck. You Stoneforge, and then you Curse Totem. Or you could just board out the stone forges when you board in Curse Totem, right? Okay, we do this. Play Dragon's Rage Channeler. So I guess I should keep that and save the other bobble then, right? Does that make sense? Yeah, this makes sense. Okay. I'll take a wear tear. Pyrate Spellbomb. Well, that's interesting. I mean, it's good. Do I need the second one, though? It's probably okay to keep the second one, right? I think what I want to do this turn... This is weird. Graveyard also gets me closer to Delirium, though. Because we can go land, artifact, sorcery. I want to cast Flute this turn. I think. This is really close. Yeah, the Nightmare deck could be on YouTube. I don't know exactly when. Uh, tonight's video is going to be Mono Black Scam. That's what's going to be on, on tonight's. Which is in like two and a half hours. From uh, from Friday. I'm going to graveyard this. It feels really weird to graveyard it. But I, I think it makes sense. Okay. kind of awkward unless no that's stupid mm, maybe i didn't do this right what if i just let them kill the channeler and play stoneforge well no because if i stoneforge for cauldron they just kill the stoneforge right what am i fluting though i don't know i don't know how to play this game i'm so lost uh That's kind of awkward. I don't want it, weirdly enough. I'm going to name Emery. I'm going to name Emery and just let them spell bomb my DRC. I think I'm okay with that. I'm pretty sure that I did not play that turn sequence perfect. I think mistakes may have been made. But I kind of want to save the second meltdown. And also it's like maybe they don't play around the second one because I've been the first one. They probably will. Hold on, let me read Emery again. Costs one less for each artifact. Oh, so if they just have four artifacts, they can, or they, they basically can pay for the discount with the Emery, right? I think they can. Okay, well, I mean, this has got to be a good meltdown turn. So we have Sorcery, Artifact, Land. That is a pretty good creature to put into the graveyard. Pretty, pretty good. Yeah, it works the same as Affinity. We just want to find a land next turn for Flage, ideally. I wasn't sure if the text on it was it costs two less if you control two or more artifacts, or if it was one less for each artifact you control. But it does basically have Affinity. So you can, be, like, if you have five artifacts in play, you can still cast every for one mana. But it, it at least did prevent them from casting it last turn, which I think is probably good enough. So 
So they can use this for green, pop this, fetch, play Emery if they want to. Okay, well, they did not do that. Uh, I think I'm just going to go to combat. Tech first, because I'm going to lose Delirium this turn. I think I go upstairs, right? Because if I target this, they just kill the flute in response. So I might as well go upstairs. And then I want to keep... I get to keep one card in the graveyard. I think I keep sorcery. Because I'm pretty sure I have less sorceries than anything else in my deck. Upstairs. First time casting Flage. Feels pretty good. I do like me some Flage. I think this card is, like, just really, really, really good as a mid-range threat. Like, I almost wonder if this is this is just a good four-color card. It probably is. Get the one ring. The Huan Ring. So now we can go... Flage, attack this, flute the ring. Seems good to me. Play Stoneforge. Maybe I had that. They did not use the ring. Go this, get the Cauldra. Attack, kill Haywire Might. All right, your turn. They go to eight. They're just not going to use the ring then. We're naming Emery with the other one, which maybe they have an Emery at hand. Tough to say. And now they can't even play a second ring to get out of it because it costs seven. It looked pretty dead to me. I don't know about you. Yeah, that's true. Emery not good against an active flage. Even if they had Emery, they probably wouldn't want to cast it. They okay, were shocking. Why are we shocking? Sus. Two mana. That can't be good for me. I mean, it's probably okay, right? I have two mana left. You can go Haywire Might, four artifacts, two mana Emery to turn on the Amber, I guess, maybe? I feel like they probably still can't really do that much, though, right? Because they need to find a Legend to turn on the Amber. Is it crazy I want to play a deck with four Flutes main board? No, Flute's pretty good. I thought about playing Flute as the uh, additional two mana card in the Eldrazi deck. Similar to why you would main deck Chalice, but Flute theoretically has a wider range of matchups that it's good in. But, I mean, if you're playing a deck with Ugin's Labyrinth, turn one Flute, like, I guess it's not as good because you don't know what you're playing against necessarily in game one. So, you don't really want to just Flute in the dark. But it is a very good card. Wait, this card has Flash? Ah, huh. I didn't know that. Well, now I do. I now know it has flash. I had no fucking clue, man. It just like has never come up, you know. Like usually, you, if you're if you're trying to prevent your opponent from casting a spell, you just want to main phase it anyways, right? All right, you're listening to "My Heart Will Go On," recorder by Candlelight by Matt Mulholland, requested by Pike S and D, classic canister troll song. This is the soundtrack to this game. Oh, I see. I see. Is there a, is there a Keck flute emote? Let me look at 7TV real quick. We're going to find a flute emote. There is a Keck flute emote. All right, Dumic wins. Let's go. All right, play first. Most people in chat probably don't even know what Edison means. Well, I mean, they know Thomas Edison, but... They don't know it in the context that we're talking about. And I don't even know who Thomas Edison is. I'm going to make my return to Master Duel. He invented the PB&J. Jesus Christ. This is the worst song that I've ever heard in my entire life, and you cannot change my mind. I just, I can't, I can't. I'm turning it down more. I'm turning it down as low as humanly possible. Is that a challenge to find a worse song? Let's go back to Biggie. This is more my style. 
Sorry Magic Online has encountered an error. I mean, bro, you're the one playing the deck. That's not my fault, you know? You, you, you probably shouldn't play Scoot Swarm. Because the issue with Scoot Swarm is if your opponent makes you do out the combo, it just crashes the client, so... If you're playing online, Scoot Swarm, probably not the best idea. Yeah, you shouldn't play it, though. I realized that after the fact. <laughs> it's not the best idea. Nethergoyf. Nethergoyf. Alright, it for six. Eleven. Fable. Where's the classy music? This is classy music. Is Dreamcatcher not classy music to you? Ooh, I didn't realize that. Yeah, I guess, because I, I'm going to do this end phase, but I should have just done a main phase. You're right. I forgot that this was going to get me Delirium. Dreamcatcher is good. Yeah, I don't, there's no reason not to do this main phase, because I'm just going to do it anyways. Post-combat Shadow Spear. Okay. Interesting. So they're just dead? So put in sword, ephemerate the stone forge. Because I need the ephemerate of the graveyard. Very, very dead. Wait, are they dead? Wait, no, they're not dead, right? Did I do my math wrong? Well, now they're dead, right? Uh, No, they're not dead. Yeah, I just didn't do my math right. Well, no, because if I equip the Channeler, they just double block the germ, right? Which I guess is maybe fine because I kill both Goyfs that way. So maybe that was just better anyways. Six, seven, eight, nine... Now they can haywire by by Cauldra. This is actually kind of dicey, right? Wait, did I did I fuck this up? I guess I should have equipped the Channeler, huh? I didn't think it mattered because now we can't kill them. Hmm. So, if I move the sword to Channeler, they sack haywire might kill the Cauldra, go up to nine, and then take seven. Yeah, the two life matters a lot here. I can deal them one additional point of damage with the Stoneforge Mystic. If I send everything. No, because they can just block the Stoneforge. Yeah, if I move the sword to Chandler, they block Stoneforge, sack, kill Cauldra, up to nine, take five, go to four, trigger, put them to two. I guess we can just hope to drop Bolt off of the uh, the sword trigger. I don't see any other way out of this. We can also... Okay, hold on. We can also... Ephemerate the Stoneforge before damage to get a Surveil. Which might be worth it. The song again for real. Well, the, I skipped it the last time. At least that's what I was told. Have we listened to this today already? I don't remember. Also, it's a banger, so. All right, Cauldra down. So, I guess what we can do is... Wait, two, three, four, five. Ephemerate now just to get the surveil. Why did I do that? <laughs> Why did I do that? Oh, man. It's okay. We'll draw the bolt now. Surely I will simply just draw the bolt now. I don't deserve it, but... All right. I fucked that game up. <laughs> I definitely fucked that game up. Yeah, we do have more bolts than flages. So, like, it is, I think, technically correct to ephemerate there because it gives us the extra look at bolts. And we have less flages than we have bolts. So even though we got punished, I think it was, st well, I think it was still right. Could have ephemerated with the trigger on the stack so you could block the DRC. I guess, yeah, but I, I just kind of assume that I'm not getting another turn if they get one more attack with the Shadow Spear in. Like, sure, I can jump block with Chandler, but I just don't have outs if they gain six more life. 
All right, Priest bad. Meltdown seems okay. Wear tear is good against Saga. These, I think, are all mid. We could Blood Moon as well. I might try cutting Ragavans and Ephemerates. And we can keep in two Ragavan, not board in the Blood Moons. It's probably okay. I don't know if we need Blood Moon because we have Wear Tear for Saga. But it might be good to have both. I mean, the two decks that have been the most impressive are definitely Eldrazi and Nadu. Everything else feels okay. There's there's some stuff that's close, but those are those are the standouts by far. I don't want to save the bobble. For when I have a fetch land on turn two. Gotta play Necroscam. We played it on day one, and it felt decent, but I think that the version we played was kind of bad. The mono black with less threats. I think black white's probably very good. Alright, so let's do this. I don't really want that. So let's do this. Okay. How do we fight the Nadu? I mean, there's some sideboard cards. The best one is definitely Flare of Malice. The issue is that not every deck can play Flare of Malice. But you can just, like, Pithing Needle, the, the Shuko can be good. Uh, same thing with Disruptor Flute. Like, there's some stuff, you know? But it is the reason that the the reason the deck is so good. I should have killed this in response to the trigger. I'm stupid. Uh, the reason the deck is so good is because it just it fight it fights through hate so well, because all of your cards just you know not replace itself and all that. I guess we're just doing this, and then we go here, kill that, do this, and then I. Guess probably Solitude the Goyf. Maybe this is kind of a speed to do it now. But I, I cut the Ephemerates anyways. This would have been a lot better if I'd killed the Saga with the trigger on the stack, huh? Honestly, kind of happy they're doing that. Should one by Nidos are made for full release? I don't know if they're necessarily going to go down anymore. Like, I don't know what the price is now, but I, I don't... You know, again, not financial advice, but it's probably fine to buy them now. Are they expensive? Done. They're $25? It's a rare! Okay, 25 might be a bit much. The best is Force of Despair. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, I guess that's a good point. I was thinking that maybe Force of Despair is more situational, but it does kill everything. Well, is that even true? Because what if they... I guess, like, I could imagine a world where... I'm just going to concede this game. <laughs> we have nothing left to the saga of you in. Um, I could imagine a world where, like, you have... They have a Nadu in play, and they trigger it twice, maybe don't find a second creature, and then, like, the situations where you draw Force of Despair, but they have a, they already had the Nadu in play... I could see that being kind of awkward. Gigantha the Wellspring. Keep this. Gigantha Kentry Trap, huh? Um, let's do this, I guess. Ragavan. Oh. Dead. Dead Jim. Stone Forge. Maybe I should have killed the Ren. But I kind of want to get this I want to get this cauldron going. This is a lot worse if they kill the Stone Forge. But if they don't kill the Stone Forge, it's really good. So it's a bit of a high roll. What was the black for? It's just my um third source for prismatic ending. I don't even know if you need it to be honest. But it seemed like it was maybe worth it. It's kind of rude. Ooh, I like that. Uh, I don't know if they play Spell Pierce. I'll play around it. You never know. They end up Spell Pierce. I need white mana. Yeah, that's a good point. It was worth it against the Emery deck. Looks like they're playing Teamer Saga. So, like, Jund, but maybe with blue instead of black for perhaps Tamiya? Let's 
might be a ring. Oh. Main deck, picker poison. What is that? It's rude. That's what that is. I guess I'll attack. Yeah, this is game one. They have main deck picker poison. Touche. Touche. I guess I should shock here so I can kill the token before they play more artifacts. Because what else is my bolt doing? We can bolt the first token and then uh, solitude the other one. Just do it now, might as well. We did not even get to pick our poison. It's kind of funny. I mean, I guess the, the, the flavor is you're the one picking the poison, so you, you get to choose the poison of which you give them. But it's like, I don't get to choose. There's no decision here. It's all on them, huh? Kind of rude. Dude, they are literally cooking. Zombified. They definitely are doing the cook. Touche. Give parlor. A little free surveil. Stop that. I'm going to hold the land in hand. I'm the walking dead. Maybe they're out of stuff. Surely they're out of stuff to do, right? I mean, I guess they always have Gigantha. He's zombified. Okay. I get Spec Saga. Yeah, Pick Your Poison does answer Nadu, which is nice. I didn't think about that. Okay, Gilren hit you for two. And we can discard these other lands to Fable, which is nice. Fable. They have some big construct tokens. Very, very big. Or not? Hello? Why would you sack a token when you're when you have a saga? That's kind of weird. I feel like you want to just size the construct tokens there now. It does hit the Shuko. Aiden hits Saga too. Most of the uh I think all the Nadu decks have shed have Saga, which is another good one to hit. Not great. Not great. Uh myself. Okay, it doesn't look good, but I think it is because that we can go Ephemerate, Stoneforge, or activate Stoneforge, trigger on the stack Ephemerate. Problem is, if we attack with the Shamans, they can make a token, discard a card, make a food, make a 3-3, block, take 5, go to 10. So I think Solitude is our only really good attacker here. Maybe they trade. Or that. It also works. You know what? I'm now realizing that this Ephemerate is not good because they can just make a construct that's bigger than 4-4 four four and just block my sword. So we need to find something else. I'm just going to hold the Ragavan. We have infinite mana. Sambo fight. Need to find, like, another Solitude. I mean, I guess. Moto said, you don't want the Ephemerate? Well, how about a Stoneforge? It's the same thing, right? Just in case you, you thought you didn't want the sword, here's the sword. We got you covered. You know, I gotta say, this is uh, maybe not going well. That's gonna be hard to beat. Miss Halted? <laughs> Blame the music. All right. I guess I had maybe one or two more draw steps in me, but we weren't winning that game. All right, where tear me? It appears that we may have, uh, we maybe are playing the worst Saga, the worst mid-range deck. Mostly because they have Saga and we don't, and that card's really hard to beat when you're trading one for one. It seemed like their mana base was kind of abysmal, right? Totem bad. Flute. Meltdown good. Will we cut against them? Uh, Ragavan out, and I've been cutting Ephemerate in these matchups. I don't know if that's a good idea, but I just don't know what else to cut. Everything is too good. I guess we'll not, we won't bring in all four Blood Moons, bring in two. Play first. That seems fine, right? 
Channeler, kill their first creature, play Blood Moon. Hope that's good enough. Uh, I would like to fetch two basics with these, so we can do that. That thing is dead. I guess I'm going to top it, because I only have two basic planes, and if I bottom it, the, if I graveyard it, then I can't fetch the second planes, and that is worse with Flage. But I do want to fetch here. Okay, come on, dude. What are we doing? What are we doing over here? I think they may have cooked a little bit too much. They could also just have pick your poison in their hand. It's a third type for Chandler. No, this is not the vibe right now. This is more like the vibe that I'm looking for. Okay, what what the fuck is this? What is going on right now? What is happening? What am I playing against? Brother, what what are you doing? What is going on? This is modern. I I that's what I thought, but maybe I'm wrong. What is this? I mean, they have to be playing Karn, right? You wouldn't just play coding without Karn, I think. I would guess. I mean, they're playing some weird lantern deck, I guess. We haven't seen a we haven't seen a single lantern piece though. We've seen no lanterns, no shredders, none of that stuff. So I don't know. It's a weird one for sure. <laughs> Bro, can you stop? Can you stop with the coatings? So we have creature instant land. Weirdly enough, I think I don't want to discard. I don't want to get Delirium because that's less damage with Channel Air. Because if I Delirium, then I can't attack through the bridge. I guess the other idea... Oh, wait, I could though, right? Because I could just Delirium and then pre-combat Flage. Because I could have done that. Scraper that, I guess. Although keeping that's just three more damage. I have a Saga on top. So, one, two, three, four, five. I'm keeping a land in the graveyard because Blood Moon means that my lands are not going to go to the graveyard anymore. So it's actually going to be harder to get lands in the graveyard than basically anything else. Yeah, I guess I could have done that too. I could have declared attackers with the 1-1 one, one channeler and then pop the bobble. That might have been better too, yeah. Okay, well, now that we have a better understanding of what they're doing... Uh, let's reassess. Okay, Bolt's bad, because they don't have creatures. I think the Ephemerate's still bad. We could honestly cut the Solitudes. What if we did something like this? And we played all the Blood Moons, all the Flutes, boarded the Ragavans back in? Because it's not like they have creatures anyways. Their creatures are Saga Tokens, which we can kill with Meltdown and, and Wear Terror. I think this is fine. Yeah, that's a good point, but like, I wonder if there's some kind of like weird team or pond deck where they just go play they play coding plus ancient grudge as a way to just blow up two lands they could be doing something like that i do remember those team or pond decks back in the day all right bobble myself i don't really want a second stone forge but it's awkward because now i don't necessarily have a basic planes Maybe I should just draw the second stone forge there. Okay. We have an answer to rent if they have that, which is good. And yeah, they can't play rent. Name stone forge. Cookbook. Cookbook. Let's go to combat. Should get over there. Another saga. I mean, who needs white banner, right? 
surely this can't backfire. Okay. Well, it turns out it's maybe Ragavan is still good. Yeah, I know. Sometimes you just cast turn two Blood Moon and your opponent doesn't want to play anymore. I mean, this deck was not bad. I've st I'm still not 100% sure if it's better than the energy versions with Unstable Amulet, Galvanic Discharge, and what's the other energy card? Static Prison, Guide of Souls. But I really do like the, like, I really like the interaction or the synergy between Fable and Flage, where you can discard Flage to Fable and it helps fill your graveyard to recast Flage, because Boros traditionally is not the best at putting cards in the graveyard, and then Channel or Bobble kind of helps that too, so... I mean, this is kind of just like cookie cutter stock flage deck, and it was it was an okay it was an okay first pass. So if you're watching this on YouTube, like, subscribe, comment, and I will see you guys in the next one.